Crumpet Nitro. Well, I have to admit that Traxxas Nitro vehicles aren't really that popular in Australia. But I've been watching Hybrid Hybrid 32494 for a couple of years and I've actually been talking to Dimitri personally in that time and I can see how much the Nitro gang appreciate Traxxas vehicles but more specifically why Dimitri loves the T-Max so much so I just had to get a few of these Traxxas vehicles so when the opportunity came up to get a Revo and a Jado I snapped at it got them both in one go and also I couldn't pass up an opportunity to get a T-Max 3.3 not because the price was amazing, but because the seller was including a brand new in box OS 21 TM, and that made the deal very attractive. Um, it was a big risk. The guy was far away. I couldn't get to him. I had to get him to post it to me. It wasn't on eBay. I had to pretty much send him the money and just hope it would arrive. And the seller's profile looked super dodgy. In actual fact, his profile picture was a hockey mask. So I had a quick chat with him. The guy sounded pretty cool. I sent him the money. I asked him to send me a tracking number. The guy ghosted me. I started freaking out. Anyway, he came good. He ended that up organizing a courier. It was just very slow to print and organize a box and so forth. Anyway, now you will see my T-Max 3.3 and uh, just a couple issues before we got it going nice today. And I uh, hope you enjoy. Oh yeah! Two body shells. Good condition. The beautiful T-Max. OS21 TM. Ooh, it's a little baby OS21 TM. The very short shaft. The header is on there. And the T-Max. So the wheel hubs are actually 17s. Uh, that's one thing I noticed. It's got Savox server both for steering and throttle. The OS carb has already been installed. There's an absolute ton of compression. Really, really tight. Uh, so the truck is dirty and it's been used without the body shell because we've got scratches here and here But uh, I don't think it's had too much use uh, Everything does look Like uh, Well the evidence suggests that it's just been run through some some mud but not been run for too long Because if you look at the quality of the air filter And uh, underneath the chassis doesn't look like it's been used very much at all. It's time to play with the T-Max. Um, didn't come with any radio or battery. However, the flat pack from the Revo and the Jado is working fine. Decided to use my Futaba 4 PLS to give uh, some respect to the T-Max. However, this is a cheap clone Futaba receiver that's compatible with not only the protocol, but the turbo. And so the good news is it didn't cost very much. It's got six channels. Uh, strangely enough, it's got two antennas. Not sure why it's got two.
see if we can lean it just a little bit, just to bring that idle up just a touch. So it was easy to start with the Traxxas pull start, uh, preheating the engine just made it very, very easy to pull the cord. And uh, I really like the design, especially the sloping fuel tank. So you can see the pickup is down here on the corner. It slopes front to back and it slopes inwards to outwards so that you get the last drop of fuel, um, which is great for getting a long run time. But since there's no fuel filter, it uh, could be detrimental since the fuel and dirt go straight to the lowest point and then get sucked up and straight into the carb, no fuel filter at all. So I might have to put an inline filter about there which I do have one or two spare. This is a corporate nitro public announcement. We just got a T-Max. That's why we're wearing a suit. That's why we're in front of the Harbour Bridge. Because we got a T-Max. Let's see if it starts. Cut out at full throttle, that means the engine is too lean. So the high speed needs to be rich in. Alright, so since this T-Max 3.3 has got um, some engine issues, it's cutting out when I run it at high speed. I went on to the, uh, the group on Facebook, asked for some help, and they're all saying that I've got an air leak. So I'm remo removing the 3.3 uh, and the fuel tank, and uh, the first thing I notice is that the O-ring in the fuel tank is uh, it's a weird shape. And it's got a lot of wear. Okay, so I'm gonna probably gonna order a new one, um, just to eliminate that being one possibility. I've measured it, and it looks like it's a 15 by 20 by 2.5. Uh, and I do have something similar on the way in the post, but uh, not exact. So I'll order some more since they're not expensive. And uh, the fuel tank doesn't seem to have any other any other cracks or damage so that looks fine so we'll just order the o-ring and uh let's take this apart and give it a bit of a clean and uh maybe what we'll do is we'll just leave it all together so we don't get anything inside it try and clean it up as much as possible first and then just focus on the back plate and the carb neck and the head and not worry about taking the whole thing apart and uh since we're doing cleaning let's make sure that the inner air filter has got lots of oil because the more oil, the less air. And uh, right now I don't want air, I just want fuel getting to the engine so that it doesn't cut out at high speed. I do need to clean the carb anyway, make sure there's no gunk in there because as you can see, my high speed needle is uh, just about flush uh, and that's not a good sign running that rich and not, not getting enough fuel. So that's uh, a good clue. And the other interesting thing I've found, besides the fact that this 3.3 is using an OS 11K carb from an OS 21TM, is uh, this clutch is 0.8 mod, which is something I've not really seen before. Uh, it's somewhere in between a WL Toys and a Mod 1. And uh, yeah, it's just a little bit finer than, than Mod 1. 
and uh, I just thought Traxxas, Traxxas would have used Mod 1, but no, 0.8. Since the T-Max 3.3 has got so much compression, probably won't pull it apart uh, too much. I'll just give it a real light clean and uh, we won't be going for 100% perfect like I normally do. We'll just go for 95% perfect. We'll give the pipe a good clean, maybe even a polish. Uh, because there's no more metal, I've removed all the screws. And uh, we'll just start with some hot soapy water and then we'll move on to metal polish. So I've got the uh, most famous carb in the world, the OS11K in the 3.3. So I'm just going to clean up all these parts one by one. What is it? Kenya. What color is it? The bear. What does it do? The shut up. Mm. Is that a car? No, a car. The car. And now the moment we've all been waiting for. Will this 14 by 20 by 3 o-ring be a good replacement for the original Traxxas? And you can see how much damage is on the original Traxxas. It's not looking good. So we'll put the new one on, see if we get a good seal. Now, one thing I will say about the T-Max O-ring is that at 2.4 millimeters, it's so thick that depending on how hard you screw this up, will determine the overall cross-sectional thickness of the O-ring. If it's squeezed too hard, the cross section goes too thick and it's hard to close the lid. If you don't tighten it enough, the cross section is so thin that it might not make a good seal. So how hard you tighten up this is imperative to getting the correct sealing pressure. So if you've been paying attention in this video, you'll know that the 3.3 in the T-Max is cutting out at high RPM. So the new VMQ O-ring has arrived and we've put that in the lid of the fuel tank and we've compressed it just enough so that the the squishiness causes a nice seal of the O-ring into the tank. So I'm thinking that could be the main issue. No seal, therefore not enough pressure in the tank, therefore not enough fuel going into the engine and then it just goes lean at high RPM and cuts out. Uh, we've also taken this opportunity to completely clean the OS 11K carb. So that's ready to go back together now as well. I can't think of anything else that would be causing a lean out at high RPM um, other than an air leak, of course. So we'll use the opportunity to seal up the back plate and anywhere else that looks like it could be leaking air from. Nipple barb, probably washer, screw, which is coming in from there. So if we put that in first, Bit of Teflon oil. Spin the starter shaft as you put in pressure. The original Traxxas fuel line is exactly 7 inches, so 7 inches would be around there if I cut it. That's a bit of heat shield, 
to go around the front of the engine. So, put the bottom into the fuel tank. We're at neutral now. We're going to give some throttle. You can see the carb opening. That's full throttle. It's an OS 11K carb. That doesn't want to open all the way. And even if I adjust the throttle limit on the radio to give more throttle, it doesn't matter because we've hit the mechanical linkages maximum angle. So I'm not sure what I need to adjust to get full throttle. Maybe the Traxxas carb is a shorter slide carb and it doesn't need all this range of motion. Maybe that's the issue. Maybe I need to adjust the length of the throttle linkage. I'm not sure what I need to do. We've got a carb linkage issue. Either the linkage is too short or my orientation is wrong. So I've consulted with the Nitro gang and they said the orientation of the carb needs to be turned and the throttle arm needs to be angled lower down and that will give me more chance to bring the throttle uh, lever all the way over to open up the carb all the way, 100% carb opening. We've only got about 60% carb opening at the moment. Okay. All right. All right, so that's nice and low. Uh, we can't rotate this anymore because the carb won't move. So what we'll do is we'll work out how much we need to open this up. Okay, just a few mil. Just a couple mil, that's all we need. So how do you know that you're working on a 3.3? It's when you're bleeding. When you're bleeding, then you know you've been working on a 3.3. The reason why I'm taking off the screws from the engine case rather than from the engine mounts is that I don't want to mess up my mesh. It took me a while to get the mesh correct. All right, so we got the engine off. We're just going to take the uh, the header off and the pipe uh, so that it's easier to work on it. And uh, what we want to do is we want to heat up this metal carb, loosen the nut off the pinch bolt, and we're going to rotate the carb around this metal OS carb um, so that we're not rubbing on the boot yeah that would be good if we could do that just taking as much off uh, as I can from the clutch uh, because I really don't want anything to be in the way when I heat up the carb and start to rotate it all right so we've stripped uh, the clutch the cone the back uh, the pull starter, uh, the mid-range, the idle, the low speed, uh, throttle, slide throttle, everything. So I just got the pinch bolt. So the pinch nut comes off. Now you can't push the nut out because the carb is still in there in the neck of the case so can we rotate it now this is what I tried to do last time I couldn't do it no so what I'm gonna do now is get the candle put some heat on here and see if we can rotate it fuel flint candle Motorbike gloves. It's time to burn. So we've rotated it. Um, I don't know if we've rotated it too much, but we've definitely rotated it. Okay, getting really close to the moment of truth. Now that we've reorientated 
the carb, lowered the ball, and extended the throttle arm linkage. We're going to see if it all makes everything better. Let's try that now. So I did all three. I made the short linkage longer, I rotated the carb forward, and the throttle arm is more level. Can Dr. Inspector please come urgently to the transmission ward? We have a T-Max 3.3 that is not shifting. A lot of other spares came with it, such as some 14mm T-Max tyres. I never knew what I would do with these, but um, I kept them anyway. I didn't sell them. Let's go and try this T-Max out in the park. Now, when you run out of fuel and you're done for the day, and that should be the order, you should run out of fuel, that means you're done, you need to move the flywheel to bottom dead centre because you don't want the sleeve contracting around the piston at top dead centre. It's no good for the sleeve and it's no good for next time when you've got to restart. Now, on almost every car you can get to the flywheel, uh, either from the top or from the bottom. On the T-Max you really can't get to it unless you put your finger in the side here and risk burning yourself on the pipe. So. Uh, I'm very lucky. My T-Max came with a pull start, so what I do is I'll just I'll just pull it, okay, until I feel resistance, and then one little pop, and then I know it's back to bottom or thereabouts. Not sure if I've adjusted the two-speed transmission enough, but I have turned it out a little bit, trying to uh, to hit second gear. So let's put some 25% fuel in and see if we can hit second gear once and for all. Not starting, I think I flooded it, so let's remove the plug. <coughs> Alright, I'm trying to think of reasons why this truck won't start. And I uh, thought maybe I, I broke the, the lid when I was, I was flicking it before to try and prime it a different way. So I had a look and there was a little bit of black foam hanging around here, but a bit of foam won't be the reason why there's a bad seal. So I started looking at the O-ring, and the O-ring looks brand new. But then as I was closing it, I realised that um, the lid was closing very easily, and uh, on most Traxxas vehicles I've noticed, sometimes you give it a little bit of a push to fully close it, but this was closing all the way. So what I did was, put a hex driver in there, 2.5mm, did it up a little bit, 
that expands the o-ring by squeezing it and now if you notice when I close the lid you have to push it there's an amazing seal there so I've got a feeling that might be the reason why this truck wouldn't start you can see what I did there I put the fuel into halfway and then push the lid closed that way I can tune on half a tank and that way I know the seal is really good from the lid let's go to the park and we can tune this two-speed all right so the way that we tune the two-speed on the T-Max what you do is you get your two mil hex driver okay two mil you open up the little flap so now you've got access to the gearbox and what you do is you've got to rotate the wheels so roll the truck okay until you get the opening okay so you see all you see is white plastic but eventually eventually you won't just see white plastic you'll get the opening now I've got the opening so once you've got the opening that little cutout in the white plastic what you've got to do next is hold the spur gear okay because you don't want you don't want the white plastic moving and then you rotate the wheels again until you can see the grub screw once you can see the grub screw now you've you've got it all lined up just put the driver in there and then tighten to delay the shift point or loosen to the left to um, uh, speed up the shift point because it's all about tension on the springs yeah Okay, so since our car is shifting too soon, we're going to tighten. We had a few. Thank you.